Ryan Pace, are you kidding me? How can we ever win a game? I'm just kidding. Welcome back to another episode of the Bear Trap on the Boomer Bus channel. I'm your host, Terry, and today, what if I was like that? What 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 if that was actually how I was? <laughs> That's not me. I'm just joking. But I do have to talk about this in a concerned tone. I have to call myself out because I find myself being, uh, or I should say doing what I uh, see a lot of people doing, and that's being a prisoner of the moment. That's being caught up in free agency before we see what the full team looks like. I mean, we had that issue last year. People talking about Jimmy G before we got Cole Komet. Uh, even Cole Komet and Jimmy G, like, whoa, why would we get Cole Komet when we just got Jimmy G? It was a whole lot of stuff. And, I mean, we do this every year. And I get into it, too. Don't get me wrong, but I usually check myself. Um, this one is hard. It's hard to think about. Now, I'm not disappointed with Andy Dalton signing because of Russell Wilson. Individually, uh, I've said many times I wouldn't have picked Andy Dalton. That would have been my move. But, um, as far as comparing it to Russ Wilson, I don't, you know, I, I don't care about that because that's a silly way to look at it. Obviously, Russ is better, but obviously that situation is not there. Again, Andy's not my choice, but some people say, Oh, that was such a bad pick. And my question is always, who's the other option? Now, would I prefer Tyrod Taylor? Yes. Did anybody know Mariota's going to get cut? No, he didn't. Could you afford to wait? Not really. I mean, you could if you were bold, but not really. Um, Jacoby Brissett, maybe. But again, we don't know what conversations were being had. And honestly, any of those people you name, it's not that far of a difference from Andy Dalton. Trubisky, no, I'm straight. I already know what that is, especially in the Bears team. I'm good. So I'm not overly upset about that. But when you look at it all together and you see Kyle Fuller get cut, you you just I, – I don't get that. Now, if you did pay attention to uh, the previous video I did speculating who was the trade bait for Russell Wilson, I did say Kyle Fuller. Now, obviously, I said I don't know any inside sources, still don't. Just my thoughts. But the way it breaks down to me, looking at the roster and how I see it, that just made the most sense. Again, potentially Akeem Hicks, but I don't know. At his age, at his contract, at what those Seahawks need, I don't know if that stands out to me. But what does stand out is Khalil Mack, who has not been the game record that people like to say he is. You can pull up numbers, but I'll pull up film. And so uh, there's that and how much he makes. But then um, there's Eddie Jackson that I don't feel makes sense. And then it's Kyle Fuller. I, I mean, with them losing Shaq Griffin, it, it just made sense to me. Now, even with that being said, am I saying that Cal Fuller should have been cut or that I expect him to be cut? No, we are in a very interesting spot where the cap has gone down around 15 million when all we have seen is the cap go up. All we know is whoever signs the next contract, uh, they're setting the market. The next person is going to get higher. That's all we know. More money, more money, more money. And you get into a weird spot where obviously the world is in much more dire needs than football. But in the football world, you get into a world where your cap shrinks and goes backward. And that creates a totally different avenue. Now, uh, the mother of creativity is necessity. And so people got to get under the cap. If it was a regular year, we would be pretty middle of the pack with cap. But because of what it is, we are, you know, in a bad spot. And that's fine. A lot of people were. 
and some people with a regular cap were in a bad spot. So what do you do? You start restructuring. You start telling people, okay, we can convert base salary to signing bonus. We can sign you to a loan contract with voidable years to spread out the cap hit. We can do a lot of different maneuvering. Um, there's reports that Khalil Mack, uh, Cody Whitehair, Eddie Jackson restructured their contract. Now, I don't know. Because Travis Kelsey, I was listening to on Pat McAfee, there was that report a while ago that he restructured his contract, and he was like, I don't know what you're talking about. I, I never heard of that. Now, he could be lying. I don't know why he would be, but he said they haven't reached out to me about restructuring my contract. So, who knows what, whether the reports are strong or not, but restructuring contracts is going on. That's a fact because people got to get under the cap. So to think about all the number of ways, because I always say, um, or not me, but what I always hear is a contract is the law of the four corners. What's ever between those four corners is what's law. And so to think about all the ways you can change things around, the way you can maneuver to bring Kyle Fuller back, I just don't get this move. And I don't get... The Andy Dalton move, there's a lot of moves I don't get, but I try to be patient enough to wait and see what the plan is and then judge it after that. But this is tough because you bring in now Jalen Johnson was solid. As I said many times, not a great corner, uh, just individual talent. But as far as our system, he fits what we like to do. Now, he's missed some games. Excuse me. And so we saw a little bit of our other rookie. We've seen some things. But there's nothing I saw between Jalen or any other corner that made me think that Kyle Fuller was expendable. I literally just talked about how his contract is friendly. Now, the fact of any contract, for the most part in the modern era, is that it's it's, it's kind of backloaded. Like you can get some money up front at signing, but for the most part, they try to spread your cap hit out, you know, further. So we are in the middle of his contract. So the cap hit is bigger. And so I do get he was going to have a cap hit, but I got to weigh that against what he can do. Now, we don't know his 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 agent or him could have said we're not restructuring. I would have to believe a competent team reached out to him and tried to restructure. He could have said, we're not restructuring. We're not doing that. We're taking our money. And in that case, you got to make a tough decision. Is this the right decision? I don't know, but it's a tough decision. Now, to look at it, and again, I'm not trying to assume what they did and didn't do, but the fact is they cut him. And you look at his talent. Now, I've always said Cal Fuller's not a top flight corner. There's a lot of things he doesn't do well. But for what we ask him to do, he's great at. And so to look at potentially losing Buster Screen and, you know, we, we sign some, we re-sign people throughout. So maybe we signed them back, but I, I didn't see that at the time of this recording. So when you think about losing him, you think about obviously losing Tayshawn Gibson and trying to figure out what that safety spot looks like. Um, you think about just the team in general. And I was listening to a couple writers from the Tribune and some other stuff as well talk about this. And they've been saying the same stuff I've been saying literally for years. Like, we're just in a bad spot. It is what it is. Um, now, I don't think franchises have to sink themselves into a quarterback but you got human nature, you got ego, you got people trying to save their jobs. They do more than they need to when you realize a quarterback is not it, or at least not for you. So I don't think you have to, but we did sink ourselves into Trubisky. And all the things we did was around trying to get that fixed. And that was a mistake, but that's what we did. And so you look at Going all in on the defense, having some homegrown talent, but also mixing it in with free agency draft and really trying to go in on the defense. And now when you're in a spot where you're not super competitive, a lot of those pieces start to look expensive. When you look at the offense where the O-line is in shambles, you got long-term contracts on two guys that you don't believe in. 
You got your top quarterback. You finally let him walk. You bring in Andy Dalton out of a desperation move. Or I wouldn't even say desperation. You were going to bring somebody in. I get that. But then Allen Robinson on the tag, you don't agree with how much he costs. It's just a lot of stuff going on. We just weren't in a good spot. And so to look at it, at it in total picture, which is not in a good spot, but to take Cal Fuller away is head scratching, mostly because Nagy and Pace are at a point where it's a, it's a prove it year is make it, take it. So if you don't deliver this year, it's going to be an issue. Now, getting Andy Dalton, I've said people are up in arms. But look, there's things we can do. There's other things that can come about that can supplement and make that make sense. But with releasing Kyle Fuller, I just don't see what that is. I don't see what that is. Because, again, Jalen is hit half of Kyle Fuller, and who else do you got? Now, I want to understand, or I want people to understand that there's a possibility you got a deal lined up for Denzel Ward from Cleveland Browns, or there's a deal lined up to get Tua. Maybe something is in the works that we don't see now. I'm not trying to condemn them before I see the full plan, but right now it looks bleak, and I understand how you feel, Bears fans. Some people act like I don't because I be, I'm reasonable. That's just who I am. But that's just because I'm reasonable don't mean I don't feel the emotion. I feel it. I feel the frustration. And today I really feel it because Kyle Fuller's a system cornerback. He excels at what we ask him to do. He's a big part of what we do. People want to look at Kyle or I'm sorry, Khalil Mack. People want to talk about Robert Quinn when he came in. People want to talk about a lot of things at the end of the day. Roquan Smith's ability to cover in space and our secondary's ability to give our pass rush time is what makes our defense point blank period. And the third thing is our uh, front level penetration to stop the run. But those are our that's our defense. And so to take Cal Fuller out of that, it it just like are we competing? Because, again, you got one year. You bring in Andy Dalton, you might have another trick up your sleeve. You don't go after any line, or I should say we didn't land any linemen. We, maybe we went after him. Maybe we went after Trent Brown, but they like Bill Belichick more than they like Ryan Pace. I don't know. But you didn't land any linemen of significance, and you let your top corner walk, and you bring in Andy Dalton. It is tough to sit here. And understand what the plan is. And I don't expect a GM or owner or anybody else to come out and tell the fans exactly what's going on. I don't. But I have to acknowledge it's hard to sit here and understand what you're trying to deliver for this fandom. And I get it. I I, I, I keep telling y'all, this is not the show where I go off like I did earlier. I'm joking. But I understand the frustration. I completely understand it. And so as I sit here now, I have to scratch my head and wonder what they're doing. I That's all I can say. I'm not going to go crazy. I'm not calling for jobs because make no mistake. I've said in the past and I still believe it. Ryan Pace has done a solid job. The fact of the matter is, just because he signs off on the moves doesn't mean is everything's his idea. So people want to, you know, that whole thing about quarterback wins, give them all the credit. Quarterback loses, give them all the blame. No matter what the coaching staff does, blame the head coach, credit the head coach, GM, owner, all that. I don't believe in that because I've been on the staff and I know there's hundreds of decisions that happen individually that might come from different places. Ultimately, these people are responsible, but as a fan, I'm not going to blame individually. Again, Pace, overall, he's delivered a roster that we believe in, and most teams would say they believe in. He delivered draft capital that isn't horrible. Like, we're middle of the pack, but guarantee you there's teams that are strapped for draft. 
And in the normal year, our cap, like I said, would have been middle of the pack. Those are the three things the GM's responsible for. People want to talk about the quarterbacks. And I've, I've discussed all this a long time. Pace, I still think, pretty solid. And again, I would have kept him and let Nagy go. But I will also admit sitting here, it is really hard to see his vision. But I'm going to give him time and wait and see. But as of tonight, I, I forgot to say this at the top. I just finished Snyder Cut. I, that's why this is so late. And I was getting ready. I thought I was going to be doing a Snyder Cut review. I had a good time. But no, I'm talking about the Bears because of what they did and where we are. And it's it's tiresome. It's tiresome. And honestly, I never believed in Russ Wilson trade. But the hope of that, people got tickled. The playoffs, winning the division, people got tickled. And living in mediocrity is one thing. But when we got to see the light at the end of the tunnel, but didn't get out of the tunnel, people were pissed. People are thirsty and hungry. And I get it. And I have to acknowledge it. And as we sit here today, this is around 1018 on March 18th. We don't understand what's going on. And we're upset. So that's it for me. Let me know how you feel. Go down comment section, get the conversation started, share it around, thumbs up, subscribe. And remember, remember, please stay up, everybody. Stay up, but let's bear down.